Hi YouTube, what's happening? We're Witchcraft Labs Costumes. And today, we're gonna show you how to make some leather leaves. <laughs> These are for our flagship show, Ready to Roll. We have some pixie characters who are supposed to be only one foot tall, and they wear only things from the forest. So, you see that project here. We all got to collaborate on this one and had a lot of fun, and we hope you have a lot of fun uh, learning how to do it with us. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find a decent reference photo. So after looking at a couple of uh, different options, I figure we're just gonna go with the fabulous Canadian maple leaf. Heck yeah, let's get it printed off. All right, and now we're just gonna cut this bad boy out. I'm gonna leave a little bit of uh, extra room around the stem. Uh, so that we have enough room to fold that around and work it in leather. All right, I'm gonna use my pattern weights to keep this leather down so it moves around a little bit less and move it over as close to the edge of the leather as I can to get as little waste as possible. Uh, and I'm actually just gonna trace around it with a stylus, uh, because sometimes if you use something like a pen, then that ink can bleed through the, the paint when you're, or dye when you're trying to color it. So just a stylus it is, and it does totally a good enough job. And you guys not, might not be able to see it that well, but uh, I totally can, and that's really all that matters. Uh, so the next step is to cut her out. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out, but before I do, um, I notice that my blade's a little bit dull, and you don't actually have to replace your blades, you can just strop it. So all you really need is a piece of leather with some jeweler's rouge. And just run your blade along it, and your knife will be Wicked sharp. This will save you so many blades in the long run. While you're doing this too, you want to try and keep your uh, blade as much in a vertical position as you can so that you don't get too many weird like angles along the edge of the leather. I'm not exactly perfect at that, but uh, you know, I still think it'll come out. Okay, so it's all cut out. Um, I'm just gonna clean up the edges a little bit because some of them are a little bit rough. I mean, that tends to happen whenever you're doing something with a bunch of wiggly edges. Uh, and then we move on to getting the detail in there. Okay, so now that our leather leaf is cut out, um, I probably should have done this to begin with, but uh, I didn't because I forgot. Uh, I printed it out on a transparency sheet. Uh, if you've got a printer, you can pick these up pretty much anywhere. Um, and then when you're using your stylus to get in all the little details of the leaf, um, it's not gonna ruin your piece of paper because the leather is gonna be wet. So I can't wet the leather and put paper on it, it's just gonna disintegrate it. It's a bad idea. Get some transparencies. It'll save you a bunch of time and pain and uh, heartache. Here we go. All right, so we've got our water here. It's uh, kind of about the temperature of a warm tea. Uh, we weren't gonna go with super hot right away because we don't want it to set up immediately. I wanna pass this off for further uh, tooling to Chris. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a quick diplet in there, not too long. Okay. All right, now you can kind of see we've got our base lines in there. Um, they're not too deep, it's just to sort of give an idea as to where we want those veins to lie. And, uh, and now I'm gonna pass it off to uh, Chris because he is the best leather tooler we have and 
Why would I do it when I can pass it off to the best of the best? We're a team here, man. Recognize skills. Game recognize game. Pow, pow. Okay, time for step two. Ash put the veins in the leaf she cut out. And now I'm gonna use some monster clay to push the veins further down. I'll use some tooling to texture it a little bit and then some wet forming to give the leaf some shape. Let's do it. So here we are at the moment. Often sculpting is either an additive process or a subtractive process. So it's either going backwards or coming forwards. And the thing I like about this is that you can kind of get somewhere in between. By using the clay, I get to push the veins backwards and down. By using the spoon from the back, I get to pull some of the texture and the rumples and leaf forwards. And the final two steps is I'm going to push them back down and then go into the back and pinch the leaves from behind. That's going to give me nice deep furrows in the leaves. Let's do it! Okay, here is our finished leaf. As you can see, we've got some nice deep furrows for the veins. We've got a lot of nice curl to it. So what we're gonna do, and this is one of the keys to good shaping, is you wanna uh, cure it to heat. So you want it to dry under a certain amount of heat and then it's gonna keep a lot of this texture. Okay, the other thing I really like about this method, uh, you're gonna see it in the next step, is we're gonna airbrush it and all of this texture is gonna make it actually a lot easier to make that shading look very natural. I'm gonna pass it off to Jesse. So the first thing I like to do is lay down a nice solid base so when we're airbrushing, you can't see the naked leather through it. In this case, I just used a little bit of Angelus leather paint in plain white. The inspiration for the color is instead of going for a plain Canadian maple leaf color, I thought I'd use these really beautiful um, winter-inspired Japanese maple leaves. The colors that I use in my airbrush for this are Golden High Flow Acrylic. And make sure in between colors that you're cleaning your airbrush out with at the very least some nice clean warm water. I like to use to create texture is to push the airbrush when there's no paint coming out of it into a spot of white paint. It creates this kind of hole um, and pushes all the paint that's wet away so um, everything around it has this kind of cool splattery texture. This is a super fun quick project. I wish I could have added a little bit more texture to it but I think the colors turned out really beautiful and of course Ash and Chris do such incredible work.
Hi, YouTube! From Remember, 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 remember,